Scientists have carried out survey after survey to monitor the impact of the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Their studies on land around the damaged facility give a relatively clear picture of the contaminated areas. But tracking radioactive fallout in the ocean is much more complicated. NHK has been given exclusive access to the latest research effort. First, here's a snapshot of where things stand at sea. The Fukushima Daiichi plant is located on the Pacific coast. After the meltdown, many scientists estimated that most of the fallout ended up in the ocean. But now, radiation levels in seawater near the plant are found to be low. It's thought that the radioactive particles in the water have dispersed. In fact, in areas over one kilometer from the plant, radioactivity is almost undetectable. The Japanese government is lifting entry bans in waters off Fukushima. The off-limits zone was reduced in August last year. And this April, the zone was reduced to five kilometers by five kilometers off the plant. But people are still concerned. Local marine life is still showing high concentrations of radioactive materials. In August, a fish showing radioactivity 250 times above the government safety limit was caught near the seafloor. The percentage of marine samples exceeding the limit remains above 10% of the total caught off Fukushima. Fishing in waters off the prefecture is still restricted. Japanese and American scientists have started a broad survey of those waters. They want to understand the extent of the contamination and what it means over the long term. They let NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa join them on their first field excursion. In mid-May, 36 researchers from Japan and the U.S. embarked on a 10-day survey of the Fukushima coast. Their goal was to find out why fish retain high levels of radiation. It's a very mysterious thing. The uh, radioactivity level in um, marine organisms sh should be much lower. The group started work at a point 40 kilometers from the nuclear plant. It then went to 20 kilometers and to the edge of the off-limit zone. We're just a five kilometer from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. You can see the plant there in the distance. This is the first time researchers outside of Japan have come close to the facility by sea since the March 2011 accident. The researchers took samples of water, mud from the sea bottom, plankton, and other marine organisms at 15 points around the area. This device consists of 24 cylinders. Scientists sank it into the ocean and remotely controlled each cylinder individually in order to collect water samples at different depths. The utility company responsible for Fukushima Daiichi says no new radioactive materials are entering the ocean from the crippled plant the scientists say, if that is the case, fish must be accumulating radioactivity through the food chain. To test this, the researchers collect marine life living on and in the seafloor. They also gather plankton from different depths. We want to study possible routes of contamination by checking organisms near the seafloor and also the fish that eat them. The scientists use a device known as a mud pool core to gather mud samples from the sea bottom. They cut the samples into one centimeter slices to analyze the radiation levels in each layer. The next step will be to study the connection between these data from different samples and different locations. Examining sample after sample, the scientists will map the contamination and try to determine how it spreads. There is another dimension to the study. One researcher from the U.S. is looking for traces of an element called radium. It's a radioactive isotope that would mark the presence of groundwater. Hundreds of tons of groundwater are seeping into the nuclear plant every day. We 
want to use the radium isotope in the coastal sea to quantify how much groundwater is coming into the ocean. Sure. And we think groundwater is a potential source of uh, contamination from the, the Fukushima site. The group worked day and night gathering the samples. They viewed this as a rare opportunity to find out the mechanism of radioactive contamination in the ocean and contribute to the environmental safety to the region. They collected every sample possible during the mission. This accident was quite a, quite a unique accident in the past history of radioactive pollution in the ocean. We do not have much experience in the past, so uh, we need to uh, collect data and uh, preserve it for future. There are questions that we need to be involved in as Americans on our side of the Pacific looking across to what's happening on this side. So it, it becomes international very quickly. I think every ocean question almost by its nature is international because the waters move across boundaries. They don't care whose water they are. So I think uh, we need to be involved. The result of the survey are expected by the end of the year. The scientists say this is only the beginning. They say their work must continue for years to come so people around the world can understand the true impact of one of the world's worst nuclear accidents. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World of Fukushima, Japan. The displaced residents of Namie Town in Fukushima have filed a petition with a government arbitration body demanding larger monthly compensation. More than two years have passed since the Fukushima nuclear disaster forced them to evacuate. Town Mayor Tamotsubaba and lawyers representing 11,602 people filed a claim on Wednesday at the Nuclear Damage Claim Dispute Resolution Center. They represent more than half of Namie's residents who were evacuated from the town in March 2011, just after the nuclear accident. The residents now live in various locations around the country. Each evacuee currently receives about $1,000 per month from Tokyo Electric Power Company, but the petition says the amount does not accurately reflect the amount they have suffered from the unprecedented nuclear disaster. They are demanding roughly $3,500 per month and a review of the current guidelines. The petition argues that the families and communities were broken up by the evacuation. It says the residents lost their livelihoods and have no idea yet how they will cover, recover. On behalf of Namia Towns, former residents, I seek public understanding of how difficult life is for the evacuees. In a related move, Japan's upper house has unanimously passed a bill allowing victims of the Fukushima nuclear disaster to sue for damages beyond the statutory time limit. The new law will give claimants who fail to reach a mediated settlement in three years an extra month to file a suit in court. A government-appointed body has been mediating settlements between victims and the plant's operator, TEPCO.
A Japanese government advisory panel has put together draft action plans for promoting the country's unique culture abroad. <laughs> Sometimes just think funny things. The panel called for Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to announce the plans and urge citizens to participate in the so-called Cool Japan project. The panel will present the draft plans in a meeting on Tuesday. It aims to establish Japanese culture as an industry. This co covers both pop and traditional culture, including anime, cartoons, fashion, and cuisine. The panel also hopes to turn some Japanese words into globally accepted expressions. These include kawaii, or cute, and oishi, meaning delicious. The panel hopes to have the plans reflected in the government's growth strategy to be worked out next month. The scientists who monitor animal diseases have given Japanese beef a vote of confidence. Members of the World Organization for Animal Health, or OIE, say there's a negligible risk of the meat containing mad cow disease. The OIE officials announced the decision at their annual meeting in Paris. They assigned one of three grades to meat produced by member countries. Japanese beef was in the second tier, considered a controlled BSE risk. But the authorities upgraded it to the top category. Officials with Japan's Agriculture Ministry pushed for the change. They said no cattle have been born with BSE in Japan for more than 11 years. The officials say the new certification should boost exports of Japanese beef. A different group of European Union officials is focusing on protecting a key player in the agricultural process. They've approved EU-wide restrictions on three pesticides identified as harmful to honeybees. A drop in the bee population in recent years has seriously affected farmers in Europe. The insects are essential to the pollination of fruit and vegetables. The pesticide ban will go into effect in December. European Commission representatives say they will review the restrictions within two years, taking into account scientific and technical developments. Some scientists attribute the decline in bee populations to climate change or parasites. Researchers say they're the world's happiest people. Analysts with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development chose Australia number one for happiness in their Better Life Index. The survey covers the organization's 34 members, plus Russia and Brazil. Researchers tabulate data in 11 categories, including jobs, housing and safety. Australia came out on top, followed by Sweden and Canada. Japan came in 21st, unchanged from last year. The researchers put Japan first in safety. What the fuck? They cited the low rates of serious crime. <laughs> Sometimes just think funny things. But the Japanese came in 34th when it comes to work-life balance. The idea is that they work long hours and spend less time having fun. And that's rarely a formula for happiness.